Hello and welcome back to my Let's Play. So, it's now the third episode in since we started building our war fleet and we are pretty much ready for construction. So, um, all we need to do now is get our point defense frigate up and we can get to work. So, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and copy the Melbourne because, well, not frigates anymore, actually, they're destroyers now. So, Double check that the armor is correct, good, got everything we need. So we'll copy the design. That will make us a new one called Melbourne Copy. We'll order rename it to River. Melbourne River. Hmm. And we will go ahead and strip out our guns. So we got 3450 tons. And if we strip out our weaponry. This is about 200 tons worth of, worth of guns, so interesting. Um, we, I'll, I'll, I'm leaving the fire control in here because we'll um, we'll need those anyway for our point defense systems. So there are our turrets. Here they are. So one turret is 900 tons, and the lasers were. 400 and then about 200. So we've got a couple turrets worth. 14,300. Hmm. For the same mass, we can only fit two of these go, um, gas turrets. So we're potentially going to need a few of these to get a decent point defense system. It might actually be more worthwhile to get an anti-missile missile system instead, but... Hmm. Actually, no, we don't need both of these sensors. We only need this sensor. But this sensor is bigger than the other two. Hmm. Okay. So we have ourselves a fairly heavy ship. We can probably strip out a little bit of uh, one layer of armor. No, no, we're gonna... F no, yeah, no, we need to strip out a layer of armor because we need to keep the speed at least approximate and I want it to be above 10,000. Well, ideally, I want it to be 12,000. <clears> What happens if we stick another engine in there, actually? No. We don't get any significant speed boost. <clears throat> See, my biggest concern is that I've seen invaders do 12, uh, 11, 12,000 kilometers a second on their warships. And if these are even a little bit slower than that, then they're pretty much going to be completely useless, right? So we need to make sure. What I might do, if I drop it down to nine months, I can get another 100 kilometers a second. We'll just get more of them to cycle them in more often. Um, <clears throat> really can't afford these. Okay, let's strip out of fire control. That gets it up to 1,600. Wait, no, wrong way. Okay, six, uh, 10,600. Really can't afford to remove anything else at this stage. If we had better armor, we'd be able to reduce a lot of it. So, <clears throat> what I might do is, I might build these, hope they're big enough, get the next level of armor ASAP, and then if they're not fast enough, then we can... Um, then we can refit them with a the better armor, and hopefully that will make them fast enough, so... That should do. Let's go ahead and get our shipyards up and running except we need to expand them. We need to get them up to 14,000 tons. Okay. 
So Yes, okay. Uh, 22nd, 23rd of May, uh, more time costs. On the other hand, with the time costs, we might be able to get our ceramic composite armor. Let's go for it. November 2034. I think it might actually line up. Let's try. And the, you notice that this one is working about three times faster. That's because it, it only has a single slip weight. So uh, even though the tonnage is the same, um, because it has to up, um, upgrade three slip weights, it's going to be working slower on pretty much everything it does. And once this one is finished upgrading, I'll... Well, they're coming through again. It's just a scout. It's fine. Um, and it's gone again. Um, yeah, so I'll add another slipway to this one. And I think I'm going to make this one into our beam ships and this one into our point defense ships. How are we doing? Getting there. And we'll see exactly how much impact it has <clears throat> to use the better armor. Should be fairly significant, I would hope. Because, yeah, like I said, if we can, I would love to get it up to 12, but if I can get it to at least 11, um, then that would be. That will be satisfactory. Okay. Add another 12. Yeah, anti-missile ships are not going to be as important right now because since we have a jump point, we can ba we can essentially barricade them into this system. Um, so, um, yeah, they're exploring, they're exploring salt. Um, yeah, we can actually barricade them. So, bec when they come through the jump point, they're not going to be able to fire immediately. So if we have enough firepower blockading that system, we can basically shoot down anything that comes through um, with our lasers, and that means they won't be able to fire back at all. Um, the problem, of course, is that if anything does get through and also uses missiles, then we're going to be, be um, potentially in a very sticky situation. Um, that's when we're going to need our point defense. That armor is almost done. Bingo. Let's see how much space we save. So 1335. So 25.1 composite armor. Down to 19.8. Well, not as much as we'd have hoped. This has got 24.6 at 13,000. So we save about 300 tons of armor on the river and the Melbourne. So. Yeah, not as much as I hoped, but should be good enough. Actually, I'm going to strip a fire control. Because if I strip the fire control, then we can use auto fire. <clears throat> no, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. And I think... I think what I might do is actually give these guys more guns. Because I don't really need 
these guys to be fast because what will what because um enemy ships do track missile armaments so essentially what we can do is we can run it slow um they can shoot missiles at us all they want our point defense ships will take them out as the point defense as once they run out of missiles then we detach the faster beam destroyers and send them after them so it's not as important for these guys to have as much speed um, eight kilometers is very sufficient and they don't need the fast speed as well because they're using turrets see so with the turrets it's 16,000 so the turrets can track fast enough um, and we don't have to worry as much about um, making them faster so with the reduced armor we can probably get this back up to 12 these guys yeah it's only 100 kilometers a second it's fine um has a maintenance life still 1.6 1.2 yeah, that's fine. Of course, that means she's up. It's up at sixteen thousand. So we're gonna need sixteen thousand tons on the. Yeah, so this one beam ships. This one will, be, will produce a point defense because it'll be able to get the tonnage up faster. Right. <clears throat> what are we doing for technology next? Well, we got to get damage control because that's very important technology to have we're not going to be using on these frigates because we just don't have the tonnage for any major damage control um but we'll get a tractor beam so that if anything does lose engines or anything like that um we can get a tug out there to drag it home Oop. tonnage added one last round of 2000 that'll get, get up to 16. Then we can start putting out flak frigates. Um, because we're using Gauss can cannons instead of uh, close-in weapon systems, which are also Gauss cannons, but because they're using Gauss cannons, we can also, um, worst case scenario, close into point-blank range and just sandblast them with our um, point defense turrets. What's the range on those? 30,000 kilometers. Yeah, so anything is going to be able to shoot at us. But, you know, worst case scenario, we can just rock, close in and hope, hopefully we can sandblast them, get a few shots in through any holes in armor or um, whatever the case might be. Right, okay, so there's damage control. Um, all right, so what's next? Our economy is doing fine. Let's get a, get a few more levels, let's get a few levels of sensor strength because we do need those. We're definitely going to need those if we want decent warship. Um, we'll get electronic warfare as well. And we'll need tracking bonus because our tracking speed is a bit slow. Yes, that will do. Um, so we'll, ru we'll run up a couple levels of that each. How are we doing for production? Yeah, that's chugging away nicely. And... We're almost to the point where we can start building warships. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. All right. So we'll get out a little. Um, okay. I'm going to make us a component chart. So what we need is we need how many components we can prefab for our ships. So prefabrication, um, as I mentioned, is very, very useful um, for reducing the build time of ships because your industry is pretty much always going to be able to build faster than your shipyards ever will, um, unless you're one of those people who forgets to stop 
upgrading their shipyard and ends up with multi-million ton shipyards. Um, hopefully that won't be all of you. So, so at Melbourne, so we have so ship and component, and then we have quantity per ship. Ship count. And total components. <clears throat> so we have nine hundred ion drive. We have twenty centimeter C four UV. Uh, crew quarters we can't pre build, armor we can't pre build, fire control. Beam fire control, 1600. Uh, engineering spaces, can we pre-build? I don't think we can pre-build engineering, but let's go double check. No, thought so. Okay. Um, what's next? The 25 centimeter. SC4 UV laser. Uh, fuel storage we can't pre build. Reactor. Um, R10 sensor. R120 sensor. And that's it. Okay. And how many do we have per ship? We have three ion drives, we have four small lasers. We have two fire controls, we have one large laser, we have five reactors, we got one of each sensor. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, I'll move the ship counts down to here, squish it up a bit. No, wait. So we have this times this. And if we drag it down, there we go. So if we're building one ship, <clears throat> we need those. If we're building two ships, we need those. Brilliant. All right, and we will also make one for the river. And so we need the ion drive, we need the fire control, uh, we need the res one sensor, and and the gas start. So we got three ion drives, we got Two fire controls, one sensor, and four gas turrets. But this one will move to down here. Check it out. Okay. So how many ships are we going to need? Um, I'm going to go with. 12 Melbournes. I'm going to go for 12 Melbournes. The reason for 12 is because I want six of them to be sitting on top of the jump point at all times, uh, because that should be enough to pretty much kill any one ship, um, or at least severely cripple it um, before it can get its guns online. And if I have uh, if I have six, uh, if I have 12 in total, then I can put them on rotating shifts. Um, and I also have some in backup on, on emergency as well. So, 
Actually, better make it 18 then. I want three groups, so I'm going to have three groups of six. So one is going to be guarding, one is going to be about, um, one is going to be overhauling, and the other one is going to be in reserve. So, and how many point defense ships? I'd say four per group. So four, eight, twelve. We're going to need twelve. Excellent. <clears throat> I should get a tally as well. No, it's fine. Okay, so research lab, we're going to drop that to five. Construction factory, we'll leave that to 10. Automated mine, we'll drop that to 10. And we have 75% production. Uh, so 25% each for some components. So ion drive. How many ion drives do we need? We need 30. Yeah, I'm going to need to sum. So ion drive, laser, all these, um, sensor and gas turret. So gas turret is going to be this one, res1 sensor is going to be this one, this one's easy as well, this one's easy, power plant is easy, 25 centimeter is also easy, fire control is going to be this plus this, 20 centimeter is going to be this, Ion drive is going to be this plus this. Is that all of them? Yep, that's all of them. Okay, so 90 EP ion drives. We need 90 of those. <clears throat> there we go. And 20 centimeter laser, we need 72 of those. Um, fire control, we need 60 of those. Oops. Uh, 25 centimeter laser, we need 18 of those. 90 power plants. Uh, really, we should have started this way before, not right now. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that's my bad. Uh, there it is. We need 18 of these and these. And we need 12 of these <clears throat> and 48 gas starts. Right. <clears throat> well, ah, that's fine. Yeah, no, I'm going to stop this. We need to get these components out ASAP. So, modify that to zero, modify that to zero, and that to zero. That gives us another 25. There, pump them out. Our production is also actually rather low. So, I'm going to need to get more factories soon. But that's okay. Sensor strength up. Excellent. Okay. We get another two thousand on here. Research is proceeding nicely.
what do we have so far? Got a few lasers, an iron engine, yeah. Um, we'll get sensitivity up as well. There we go. <clears throat> Lasers are proceeding nicely. So yeah, the lasers are gonna, not going to not going to take too long. Um, the power plant and the smaller sensors are not going to take too long. Um, the larger and the Gauss are going to take an okay amount of time, but the fire control and the ion drive are going to be um, are going to take ages. <clears throat> that is one of the big downsides of having larger engines like I do with the size 50, size 50 engines um, because they're so large they take so much uh, they take a lot more time and uh, build points to actually construct so it really does slow you down but at the end of the day if you have 225s they're going to be about the same amount of build points anyway so oh, somebody's having morale issues who is it? Giorgio, Giorgio Abeti. Giorgio, where are you? You're not doing anything, Giorgio. Why are you not doing anything? Okay, Giorgio got lost. Uh, let's get you back to Earth. Not doing anything. Not doing anything anyway. I better go double check the orders for my other surveyors as well. Ethan Sol. He's going to be running out as well. They've all lost their orders. Refuel, resupply, and overhaul. Okay, he's already at Sol. I don't know, maybe I, to maybe I told them all to stop when we found the invaders before and I forgot about it. Oh well. Alright, so we have started our electronic warfare production. So electronic warfare is one of the more useful technologies. Um, so it basically acts as a hard counter to um, anybody being able to shoot at you, right? So... Um, so, so you have ranges on fire control, right? You've got the max range. And ECM, you put one on your ship, and it will straight up reduce the um, act, the effective fire range of any fire control trying to shoot at that ship, right? So if you have an ECM of 20%, so an ECM-2, uh, it will reduce the, fi the fire control range by 20% against that one ship that has the ECM. Um that's fantastic, right? Because that means they have to get closer. And when it comes to beam warfare, that means that, you know, that ship, that Mazon ship might have to come within range of your of your gas guns. Or that laser ship has to come within range of your, of your Mazons. So it can't just sit back and just pew pew at you all day long because it has to get in close for missiles it's not as useful but once again if they have slightly longer range missiles than you but then you close within range uh, but they have to close within range of your missiles then once again they can't just sit back and lob missiles at you without you being able to do anything in return so there is definitely huge benefits to having ECM and ECCM will pretty much straight up counter its level worth of ECM so if they have ECM of 20% and you have an ECM ECCM of 20% then your fire controls will work normally ECCM will not actually increase your fire control range though it will only reduce the EC the ECM level um, of the ship that you're aiming at. So, yeah, remember that. Okay, reactors are pumping out. Well, we get like three of those per cycle. Time. 
All right, that's half an hour. So we'll take a, we'll take a break here and we'll continue production um, in the next episode.